How do you help people be better and find the way to be better and get past the ego so that they could actually improve, mm -hmm. but without risking your friendship? Alrighty, so we're back with another episode of Left Foot, Right Foot. Tonight, today, we're talking about the Dunning-Kruger effect in tango. So for those of you who don't know who, what the Dunning-Kruger effect is, it's a, it's a psychological term where the more you know, the more you realize that you don't know much. And generally people who are less skilled or know less have an inflated, inflated idea of their abilities. So it's one of those, that, so generally you'll, that's why you'll see, um, you might see that meme picture of the guy in third place with the champagne bottle spraying all over the place and biting the metal. But that's the idea that, you know, the more skillful you are, the more humble you get because you realize there's so much more to go about it. And it's really easy to have this bravado sense of confidence when you know just a little bit. Ah, so this the it's a sense of that you think you know um, much more than you actually do. Yes, and then when so, you know more, you realize that you don't know anything. Yeah, or yeah. you realize that you well, you only know what you know, and there's a lot of what you don't know that's out there. Absolutely. Yeah. So over sense of inflated self. Yep. Um, that's an interesting one because I think that's a big one, especially in um, this dance we call tango, because it is a very difficult dance. And I will say that there are not a lot of carrots on the stick. And so I think a lot of people have to justify their reasoning for spending so much time and effort and money into a thing that is very difficult and also very um, hard to assess how good you are. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, like, I, I, I was definitely a victim of this. And I think when I look back and when I look back, the reason why I was a victim or why I had an overinflated sense of my own abilities early on is because just like the gender disparity, you know, there weren't a lot of leads. And then it was just like, everyone was so encouraging and I let that get to my head, you know? And, and when you don't travel a lot too, you're like, you know, you're, you end up being like- The big fish in a small pond? Well, more like, you think you're a big fish, but you're just a medium fish. In, 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 <laughs> you're a just, tadpole. Yeah, you're, you're, you're just like, you're, you're, you're just barely a tadpole in a pond. It's not even a little pond, or you're just a little tad, you're barely a tadpole, but you're like, oh, I'm getting somewhere, I'm getting somewhere. You know, everyone's giving me compliments. Everyone's saying, you know, um, and like, I'm getting danced with all these great follows. It must be because of the, because it must be because I'm getting better. So you just, you know, and the organizers start noticing you or people start, you know, you might be, uh, I don't, you might be you might be getting a lot of compliments because people want you to take their classes and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's many reasons why people are giving you compliments. It might not be solely just because you're getting better. It might just be like, oh, you're a guy who comes a lot and spends a lot of money, so I'm going to give you some compliments so you come over here. Or it could be just, um, you know, we don't want you to leave because we don't have enough men. So <laughs> you know, please yeah, stay. Yeah, and like they'll, they'll do they'll do anything. They're like you know, just you know, totally inflate your ego. Um, and yeah, and I was going around thinking like I was, I was like, you know, like the hot Corvette going around. <laughs> like I, I, I can do this, I'm getting all, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, like, yeah, I can do the Roski, not everyone can do the Roski. And like, it was sloppy as heck, but you know what? In my head, it was freaking amazing. It was amazing. masterful. Yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> I think for me, um, it started off actually in my fourth month of tango. I had finished the Oxygen Challenge, which is a three month program intensive. I was doing tango five, six times, sometimes a week. And it was a lot of classes and a lot of practicas and a lot of milongas. And I was just like Rob, I was in LA, everyone's so welcoming because they wanna see more leads grow. And so I was one of those people that were like, oh yeah, you're an up and comer. And so I was getting dances with a lot of the super pros and like really great dancers in LA. And so I just thought like really highly of myself in the first, uh, really the first two, three, four months. Um, this was even before Rochelle. Um, and so I remember my first, one of my first tango teachers uh, was Mitra Martin, and she was the owner, co-owner, co along with Stefan Fabri, um, and they um, they sat me down, but it was only Mitra, 
and it was just me and it was it was a part of a, the program where they would go over uh, your progress and how you've been doing in the oxygen challenge and i just thought like i was amazing i'm a great dancer and Misha goes her first thing i will never forget this she sits me down and she goes Derek, i'm worried about you <laughs> i'm like what are you getting the creepy vibe here like, what's going on <laughs> yeah like, um yeah i, I I'm concerned because I, I watched you dance and you only dance for yourself. I still remember those words. It was, I was three, four months in and she was like, you only dance for yourself. And here I was, I thought I was this hotshot dancer. Why are all these people asking me to dance? And they're so, they're giving me all these compliments. People were calling me a prodigy, a tango prodigy. And here comes my, my first really big claim teacher, Mitra, and she's like, yeah, you, you dance for yourself and it's you dance very selfishly. And I was just, it was it like, it's like a gut punch. Like I just, I still feel it today. And honestly, it was probably the greatest motivating factors I think anyone could have done for my tango at that point. Um, and I really want to thank Mitra. I don't know if it was her genius plan or what. I like her psychology. <laughs> yeah, knowing her, right? Just how smart she is, I wouldn't put it past her. Um, but it was a brilliant way of motivating me because after that, I just kept thinking, you know what, Mitra, I'm gonna prove you wrong, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna work my way. <clears throat> I'm gonna. All I'm gonna do is thinking about how can I dance with my partners, how can I make them feel better, and like all of this thing, thinking like I'm this selfish dancer that she said, I was like, well, what can I do to like prove her wrong? And so that I, I just drove me to this other mentality, mind state of like, all right, I'm really gonna try to make my, anyone I dance with feel like they are like the star of the show, mm. right? And that changed me completely, mm. right? So I thank Mitra for that. Yeah, cool. Um, you know, I think for me, it was very different because I had like I had to have multiple reckonings, you know, because it's like, you know, you fix one thing, you're like, I'm great, and then boom, yeah, you know, something happened. Like, I think, yeah, 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 yeah. Like for me, I had to get hit by that Mack truck a few times, you know, because it just, and like I would say, like it wasn't until maybe a few uh, until like just like actually, I would say it, I would say it wasn't really until I had this knee injury where actually I, I'm at a place where I would say. I'm more mature now about where I am with my tango, um, and I and I'm still working hard, you know. But I could definitely say that I feel like I've really gotten past the whole point of ego. But the very first time, I would actually say uh, it was it was a you know my first real broken tonda. And that's what really set me straight. Like someone walked off on you? Oh yeah, even worse. So, uh, because I, you know, it's really bad when you know you're screwing up. <laughs> like I was, I was running this girl into people. I was running, you know, cause it was the first time dancing at Grand Casino. Yeah. And you know, that's a pretty screwed up floor in terms of like the shape. <laughs> and I didn't know how to deal with it. So I was like, uh, you know, I, I didn't know how to turn well. I didn't know how to do tight corners, but I thought it was amazing. Cause you know, in, in class I could do, you know, I could do uh, all the sequences. Yeah, all the yeah, all the sequences, all the figures. I knew all the moves. All you know, I knew what I knew what a cicada was. You know, all that stuff. Uh, and people were just blowing smoke up my butt. So I'm like, I mean, granted, you did know your sequences. I remember just like I could ask you like, hey, what was the sequence last float two weeks ago? And you would just do, it. and I was like, I'll be amazed because I suck at remembering. Yeah, yeah, but but you know, remembering sequences and and then being to have control and being precise are two different things. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I felt bad because I was running this girl into everybody. I had like no <laughs> navigational skills, but I thought it was amazing because you know, and um, and here's you know, here's the thing. It's she she said, oh, hey, you know, I, I gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> what? Yeah. During the me, middle of the song or no, at the break? Of like the song? at the break of the song. So it's okay. like after like the first or first song okay. or the second song. Yeah, I got, sorry, I gotta use the bathroom. That's right? kind of nice. Yeah, but I felt really bad. But she, but you, here's the worst part. She walked back to her table and started chatting with her friends and didn't go to the bathroom. Oh, so I was like, no. yeah. So and that was my last dance of the night. And <sighs> here's the thing: is like, you know, we kind of knew each other, but we weren't like buds yet. Yeah. And the thing is, like, you just danced with her. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, cool. Like, if Derek could dance with her, I think I could do it too. You know, we're about the same. <laughs> and, then, and then like, I just like it was crash and burn. 
Um, but yeah. Uh, that goes to show we're always watching, right? So when, we, <laughs> like, when you say like, oh, I'm gonna sit this one out, I'm kind of tired, and then you go dance with somebody else, we saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but, but, but the thing is like, here's the thing, uh, that was a dull eye-opener for me. I was like so mortified, I walked out. I remember, I was walking for two hours because I couldn't find my car. That was the other thing, <laughs> oh, you know? I, like, was, like, I don't remember where I parked, because you know, I parked in the street, and I was like uh, walking around for a while. That's funny. And I remember I called my best friend at the time, uh, I could see, and I was like, I called her up, like, oh my god, you know, I totally made a mockery of myself. You know, <laughs> this is gonna happen again. Like, I felt really bad, and um, you know, and that's when I started like putting down, throwing money down for privates. I really took it seriously. You did. You went overload. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah. But here I am now. But even still, it's like I kept, you know, getting my ego pumped up again, and I'd get knocked down again. So that wasn't that wasn't the only time. And uh, you know, I remember there was a time when. Um, you know, Sasha would, or actually knew even better, like, I was taking classes, uh, a class with Renata, and, um, you know, Virginia Pandolfi was there, and I was just kind of like, oh, don't, you know, I, I, we're running a little late, and I'm like, ah, don't worry, it's just warm, it's just gonna go basics, you know? Yeah. Like, I was like, ah, basics, you know? Basics. Uh, and that was the other thing, like, I, I didn't, I didn't appreciate what they were giving to me, I didn't understand the whole, I mean, it's kind of funny, because I understood it for martial arts, but I didn't apply it to tango. Interesting. You know, because it was almost like it was, a, it was a different thing, it was a different mindset. I didn't have that mindset of, that I did for martial arts because in martial art, in martial arts, like you know, it's easy because you, you get your butt kicked. You know, you got you got kicked in the face. It's like okay, well, I don't have my basics down. Yeah, I got kicked in the face. You know, yeah. um, where here it's like you you have this false sense of what you can do because everyone's following the sequence and everyone knows the sequence and like you're doing stuff and then. And then you go out in the real world, in the malanga, and you think you're doing it, and it might not be good, but you're like, oh, it's probably the follower. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, she didn't take that class and she didn't know uh, how to really move. Uh, so, um, and then again, it took uh, getting knocked out of qualifiers multiple times, you know, mm -hmm. and and then just being frustrated and to the point where I, I quit competing, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it takes, it takes a lot, um, and it's really easy to, get that ego pumped back up and thinking like, oh, here I am, I'm like, you know, top of the game again, and ta-da, <laughs> you know? I think for me, the the key moments to kind of keep knocking me down to earth when I would get too inflated is that um, in my first couple of years, for whatever, for a, for a variety of reasons, all of these organizers kept asking me and Rochelle to perform. Like, I, we performed, we were six months at Tango Mio, we performed at, uh, uh, Milonga Querida, Yuli's Milonga, when we were like two years in, like, and so we, we, were, we were performing, I was performing in Orange County, mm -hmm. um, like all over the place, like in my first couple of years. And so you would think like, oh, people are asking you to perform, that would really boost up your ego. I actually did the opposite, really? right? Because I would watch the videos of our performance and I would be horrified. <laughs> I'd be like, that's what I look like dancing? It looks so bad. Why do people like our dancing? Why do people keep asking for us to perform? I hate it. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking the way I dance, I'm supposed to, I look like the pros, right? Yeah. I, look like, I look like Sebastian Acheval, or I look like <laughs> Javier Rodriguez, right? And then I watch my, myself, and I'm like, oh my God, it's like nothing like those people, you know? So here, here's my problem, is that, I watched my own videos and performance. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh so I, I don't look super delusional, you know? Oh man. No, no, I, you know, so everyone's their, everyone's their own. But like, that, I was like, and, you know, it, it took a few views. I'm like, yeah, then you start, but like, you know, I guess for me, it's like, I was already so proud of it already mm. that I was just like, yeah, that's pretty good. And then it was, it went, and then I'd go to sleep. Two weeks later, I'm like, oh, you know, but but it took a while for me to get there too. That's you know? interesting because when I watch my videos, so I'm horrified immediately, and I have to watch it over and over again. I'm like, all right, it's not as bad as I thought, right? No, I, I have I, to keep watching it, and be like, oh, it's okay, it's decent. Uh, that moment right there, that that two seconds right there, that was pretty good. Yeah, that, <laughs> <And> the rest. <laughs> no, because I, I think it's because for me, I was still riding the emotions of of being proud of performing and, mm -hmm. and like pulling it off. I felt like I pulled it off. I'm like, yes, you know. Sometimes it's like you finish the SATs. I'm like you know, uh, you take a big test, you're like, yes, I'm done, and you feel good, and then until the score comes home later, you know? <laughs> um, so I, I guess it hits everyone differently, you know? I really miss the local performances where a lot of Milongs would invite social dancers to perform maybe one or two songs. Yeah. I really miss those times because uh, I felt like it made us more of a community, and also, like I said, I wouldn't have had those opportunities to, to view how bad my dancing was, yeah. right? But here's the problem is that, like, 
we had local performers here and you might see it as very bad, but everyone's clapping. So it might be like me where I'm like, oh, everyone's clapping, it's great. That's what they really wanna see. I mean, yeah, I'm not Javier, but you know, that's good for LA, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and that's what I mean. It's, it's like, I guess it really depends on how high do you wanna shoot. And if you're just shooting for like local claps, it's 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 really easy to then, you know, get that ego boost again, and you know, be that medium fish in a little pond thinking you're a big fish. I think what Yuliana explained to me when she was watching us, I think in her first uh, year or so, mm -hmm. and she's like, I really like your performing because I never know what to expect. You know, <laughs> like I never know if you're gonna crash and burn or like else I'm living on the edge. You're like riding the line. I'm riding the line. That's really <laughs> what our performances was. It was pure improvisation. Oh, uh, I have no idea what's gonna turn up of this, right? <laughs> and well, so I guess that's what people like, right? It's like at any, it's like watching like a police chase. Like you just can't take your uh, your eyes off the <laughs> the car chase. It's just like, oh, it's just them going down the highway. Why can't I stop watching this? Because you you never know something might just happen. They might fly off the freeway or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of what the riding on the edge thing was mm -hmm. for our performing mm -hmm. performances. Mm -hmm. You know. Nice. So here's here's a question. I have, I mean, like, it's one thing to assess yourself yeah. and kind of go, okay, this is where I am. And, and it really definitely does help when you start competing, you start seeing the scores come in. And then you have, you know, you have to kind of start thinking, you know, do I trust these judges? What these judges, you know, the judges don't feel what I feel. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of rationalization that goes into it too. There's some truth to that too. Yeah. But let's just say you got a buddy who's like, you know, totally delusional, mm -hmm. or someone in the community is kind of delusional, and like, how do you tell them? It's like, hey, buddy, you know, like I, maybe you should like take a step back, you know, and uh, think about your fundamentals, or or do you tell them like, do you tell them you're not as good as you think you are? No, I because mean, it gets, like, depends you know, on how close of this friend is, right? And if yeah. you want to keep the uh, friendship, yeah. right? Because remember, like, there's that there's that one time you had a good friend tell you tell you like, I'm better than you. But you're only you 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 know you only you're only better on paper. Yeah. So like I mean that was uh, that, that's rough you know, um, and then how do you how do you fire back at that you know there is a lot of like tension between friends and tangle that really happens so how do you help people be better and find the way to be better and get past the ego so that they could actually improve mm. but without risking your friendship. Mm. Well, my like my first word of advice for everything is to record yourself, but that's just the look, right? People will say, "I feel better than I look," perhaps. Yeah, yeah. and or you could be like me, thinking I'm amazing. <laughs> you know? I guess then the second thing would be um, maybe to, gosh, that's a tough one, right? Because if if your goal is to keep uh, your relationship with this person, that's a very tough one because they're gonna resent you yeah. for a while. Yeah, um, and they, they may never they may never not resent you. Yeah, that's true. Right? If you tell them the cold hard truth. Yeah. Right? And and you don't want to put them so so down that they quit, right? Yeah. Because yeah. if you maybe you, like say someone's been dedicating 6 7 years of their life, right? They've they've been put, really putting down the time. Like a lot of people have told me, you know, what Derek I really enjoyed your passion for tango. Like you really got hooked and you really just were went for it. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people have told me that. And so I think that if you were, if you have that, and you feel like you've put in so much work, so much effort, so much time, so much money, you you think that naturally you should get better at anything if you put in more time, money, effort, right? Yeah. So then to tell that person that you still suck, that's like, yeah, dream crushing. It is. It is soul crushing. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. You know, I, 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 see, I can't do that, but. I'm I'm a bit of a roundabout person. I'm mm -hmm. I'm a and in a sense I'm a bit of a manipulative person too. Mm -hmm. um, I think we all are. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, but I think I consciously I'm, I'm consciously manipulative. Okay. You know, and I, what I would actually do is just egg people on. Be like, hey, bye, man. Like, join the competition. Join this. You know, like <laughs> put yourself out there. Yeah. Man. No, but like I would encourage them. Like, yeah, put yourself out there. You know, I'm gonna do the competition. You should do the competition too. You know, and and let them come to that point of crisis with the judges. Mm. And and then see what happens. It's like if they're like, dude, why did why did I go why did why did I get scored so low? I felt so good. And I'm like, well, you know, do you want like because I, sometimes I feel like you need that opportunity. Like the you need an event to actually pinpoint the opportunity to talk because 
Otherwise, it's like, well, I'm getting all the dances at the Malanga. Every girl wants to dance with me. You know, it's like, how do you, how do you, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you talk, how do you get beyond that? Yeah, because th those those people actually probably don't even believe in competition. No, and then, and and you know, and then sometimes you need a really sometimes you need, you need to invite people to a really good strict teacher like who doesn't sugarcoat anything because mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of teachers they sugarcoat. Um, where their students are because they still want the business they don't they're they're scared of telling them that like you know you still need a lot of work mm -hmm. you know and you know uh, even now it's like i feel that um you know now i'm taking class with carlson and Mike, i feel like i think i get you know, i'm getting kicked like every week you know they're like keep your feet together stop hunching you know like you i know? guess my my question is what do they gain from you telling them that they're not that good what well the the ability to actually focus and like for me uh it was the ability to go back and really clean up my fundamentals mm -hmm. it was to be more precise to actually um <clears throat> because if you build your tango on a broken foundation you're, it's still a house of cards yeah you know sometimes you need to just take a wrecking ball to everything and <laughs> start and, over and i mean and as much as i hate um you know some of you don't know this but like i had an acl rupture and i couldn't walk for six months and i i decided once i was able to start walking while limping i started taking tango again and i i was like you know i'm going to take beginner classes again because i need to learn how to actually move because like i haven't walked in six months i don't, I don't know if i have the strength to do this and you know, I'm not gonna like, go back and take psychotic classes, and that's probably the best thing for you. Yeah, it, and it it was it it was humbling, and it was it was one of those things that it really showed me that I really didn't know what I was doing. Like, I mean, yeah, I could skate on bike and muscle it through, but I really it was almost like I was using momentum instead of technique. Right. You know, I was just muscling everything through, mm -hmm. um, and you know, with a busted leg, you know, I had to have good technique, or else like I ri <laughs> I risked like you know, not walking again, you know? Yeah. So uh, as much as I hate, like, I'm still recovering, you know, like, I, I still have weakness in my right leg, but um, it really opened up this new idea for me. And and that, everything that I've learned for the past year and a half um, from my, you know, from surgery, it's been, you know, it's been life altering and also tango altering for me because uh, I, I, I was able to approach it without the ego this time around. And I'm not saying my ego won't get inflated later. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball or anything, but I think I'm more likely to be more humble now and to not be a victim of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Hmm. But yeah. So you recommend people go out there and break their leg? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, 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 but you know what? Injuries do like, like it really makes you focus on you know if anything i you know what part of me feels like um it's really easy to go back and take a beginner's class again and just go yeah 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 i know i know i know it right mm. but it's another thing to go back and take a fundamentals class and really have a teacher grill you right you know um, and it, it, like, I think sometimes I learn more in those fundamental classes than I do in the advanced classes. Yeah, yeah. No, because or maybe like you heard it, but just like you forgot about it, you, you stopped doing it. Right. So, um, no, I totally agree with you there. But you know, like I was a guy who would always just be like, oh yeah, you know, Mikhail Baryshnikov, like would go back and take beginners classes. So I, I would talk the talk, but didn't walk the walk. You I know, see. and again, it's like Dunning Kruger effect, and like in you know, super, you know, like I, like. I, I'm not denying it, you know. Mm. Um, I, I can't deny it. It's, it's, it's uh, I think I can speak to, very well to, um, you know, how well I perform on this. But I think that it's very easy to um, have a false perception of yourself. Well, yeah, be, like through virtual signaling, through like, you know, like, oh, you know, I, I know this. Like, and you, you, you parrot what everyone expects to, you know, because how can you argue against these things? How can you argue against like, Oh yeah, you know, uh, like Bruce Lee was the cha cha king, you know. So you know that's why every every person should learn how to dance. You know, like you can't argue against that mm. um, because it's very it's it's a very simple thing, and um, and if, it's almost like if you disagree with it, then you know you're disagreeing to this, this giant paradigm that everyone's already agreed to, mm. and it's kind of you know it's it's big it's 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 almost like disagreeing against like accepted dogma.
Right. You know, um, and in that, it, for those who are affected by the Dunning Kruger effect, it's very easy to start parroting these things as if you thought of it yourself. You know, mm -hmm. and and sometimes it's like you. It's almost like you believe the lie. It's better to live the lie sometimes. Yeah, but like, it's, fun, it's fun yeah, to live the lie. Yeah, because it, because it makes you happy. But but, yeah. but like but if but you, if you're not producing results, you know, you yeah, you're gonna you have you're gonna end up like having that day of wrecking someday. Well, what's the line between being delusional and confident? I feel like the line seems like it's very s small. Delusional is when you don't have the skills to back it up. Mm. Confidence is like you have the skills and you know that they're there. Mm. You don't have to show it, mm. you know, but you know, you don't have to like keep on like throwing people's faces. Look, yeah, everyone, I can do Nanrosuke. You know, it's not that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes um, confidence is, is, hey, I know I can do it. I, I can do it well, but I don't have to do it. You know, it's a choice to not do it mm -hmm. uh, because maybe it's not the right place for it. But at the same time, I'm gonna still practice my fundamentals and everything on the side. I, I think that's confidence and that's also a sense of humility. It's another thing to to start like, you know, being rambunctious, be like, hey man, I'm like, you know, I'm the king of the world, you know? <laughs> um, it, it's, it, it, I think it's really easy, especially to do, be that person uh, in tangos because the scene is so small, um, the gender disparity makes it really easy for guys to fall into that trap. And especially when most classes focus on figures and moves and not necessarily the technique, you have this idea that like, you, you know, you do, you go to an advanced class, it's like, yeah, I got that figure in the advanced class. I must be super advanced. Super Where's the advanced 5.0, you know? <laughs> Where's AP Tango? Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it, uh, I think the structure of our education really sets us up to fall into the Dunning-Kruger effect. Yeah, I, I never liked the tier system. I never liked beginner, intermediate, advanced. I just don't believe in it, right? I just don't believe Tango works that way. I don't think there is such a thing as like, this is beginner and this is not, right? Yeah. I think everything has its value, Yeah. No. right? When you start placing like, oh, this is less of value and this is more highly value. No, mm -hmm. it's not. It's all, all on one plane. Yeah, but I also think, but in a, in a sense, it's, it's like the quality of that thing, you know? Um, I guess it's one of those things where, like, let's take gymnastics for example, or like some some kind of Olympic sport where that's that's a bit subjective, mm -hmm. you know, uh, or like ice skating. Yeah, you have you know you have the difficulty of the movement. Like you know, uh, a triple axel is harder than like just a simple single jump, right? Okay. But the thing is, if your triple axel is kind of messy, you don't you <laughs> you you score low, but you get a multiplier because of the difficulty. The difficulty is, yeah. yeah, it's harder. But you're generally, but you're more likely a better skater if you can get a 10.0 on a low difficulty thing. Yeah. So it's like, but it's only, you only increase the difficulty and you push it because the competition demands re it. Yeah. Because it's, everyone's getting the 10.0 on level one, you yeah. know? So now it's like, oh, you gotta go to level two. Now you gotta go to sort of level three difficulty, you know? And like, that's kind of how I feel about Tango, where, well, if we talk about competition, you know, where you better you better go out there and make sure all your fundamentals are clean as heck mm -hmm. before you push the envelope and start, you know, doing your signature stuff. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think about this? I think this is definitely a very common issue in tango. A lot of people definitely have a overinflated sense of their own abilities, abilities and skills, and I, I don't. You know, it's very tough, right, to to tell that person that they could get better. Um, and luckily I've had a lot of those people in my life say that, you know, <laughs> you're, you, you're, not, you're not as good as you think you are, this is what you need to do. And so I kind of always take that as, you know, humble pie. Uh, but we would like to know what you all, your own experiences with this or with people that you know um, and where they have an overinflated sense of their own abilities. Yeah, actually I also like to hear from people from, you know, uh, outside of America, like does this idea of you know, overinflated ego affect the community. Cause you know, I've heard in Russia that some of the ladies will just not even dance. Cause they're like, the guys just don't even like make, you know, they're like- They don't make an effort, yeah, why should I? Yeah, no, no, it's more like, they're not good enough. I'd rather sit out for a whole two, three hours 
then dance that person because he's just not even there. Yeah. Well, we see that here too. Yeah, we see it. Well, yeah, it's but not, I'm, no, I'm talking about the whole room. Ah, uh, okay. Like, you know, the yeah. whole room would like, because over here it's like, okay, you see 20 ladies sitting out. Yeah. You're going to get one. <laughs> yeah. Right? At least one. Yeah. You know, or the, from what I hear, I mean, maybe it's a myth, but from what I hear, you might see like 20 ladies sitting out and they're all not, they're all like, you know, they're all a pack. Yeah. And they're like, and no, pack, sorry, nope, we're, nope, we're, nope. We're all working together on this. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, you got to come back when you get better. <laughs> so That's I've heard that. So I'm kind of curious. Is that true? And is that true in your community? And maybe is that, do ladies, do they dictate the level of the community because they're the ones accepting? That's a whole nother video, but I think it's true. I definitely do. All right. On the next episode, left foot, right foot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yeah, let us know in the comments. Thank you all again for watching and we will catch you on the next one. Hey, thank you all so much for watching our videos. Make sure you click that notification bell so you can get all our updates. We greatly appreciate it. And it'd go a long way in helping us put out better content for all of you. Thank you.